evening, HR After Workers. Welcome in this eighth webinar proposed by the Munich HR After Work community. So I am Marie, one of the two organizers of the Munich HR After Workers, uh, with, together with our dear Sushma, who is actually not together with us tonight, but who will be there promptly uh, later in the year. So we are glad to kickstart this interesting session that will be hosted by our guest speaker, Ekaterina Potter, who is the Global Head of, Compensa of Compensation and Benefits at Celonis. And uh, as you guys all probably know already, since June 2020, we are proposing those webcast formats um, in replacement of the usual get-togethers that we uh, proposed uh, beforehand in Munich. In a, in, in a bar located in a city center. And we hope to be able to meet you all physically pretty soon. But um, the good thing with having those digital formats is that it's allowing us to uh, welcome colleagues from abroad as well, such as our French uh, participants tonight. So thank you all for joining tonight, for joining us tonight. So Total Rewards and Gen Z is the title we chose for the event tonight. Um, and um, I'm going to obviously give the floor to Ekaterina in a second. So make sure to turn on your webcam uh, to make this workshop even more livelier uh, and more effective. So you could be eating, you can be having a bad day. It doesn't really matter for us. Uh, be comfortable, uh, feel really at ease with us. And um, yeah, I'm actually going to give the floor to Ekaterina now. Thank you. Thanks, Marie. Wow, fantastic. Hi, everyone. My name is Ekaterina Potter. I am super happy to be a host uh, for this session of HR After Work Munich, this month's uh, session. I hope everyone has been having a nice week so far. I'm going to share my screen. Let me know if you stop hearing me. I hope internet can survive tonight, but it's been snowing in Munich today, and sometimes when it snows or rains, my connection suffers. No, we hear you very well. Okay, well, fantastic. Thank you. Total rewards and Generation Z. So this is the topic for tonight, as Marie mentioned. Um, we will explore the conjunction between compensation and benefits, HR at large, and the multi-generational workforce, in particular Generation Z or Generation Z. And this will be an interactive se session with me presenting some slides, some content, and us doing some activities collectively and having a, having a dialogue together. And then we will wrap up with a, a freestyle discussion and that would be it for tonight. So by way of a brief introduction, I've been working in the area of comp and ban for about 15 years now. I worked in large corporations and smaller startups in a variety of organizations, in a variety of industries, and particularly mostly in the last about 10 years in the technology space, software companies and SaaS companies. Currently, I'm heading the comp and ban function at Salonis which is a hypergrowth SaaS firm that is headquartered in Munich and New York. We are globally distributed. We have about 17 locations and are doubling our headcount and revenue every year. Right now, we are about 1,200 employees. I've joined the company in August last year, and it's been like seven months, but it feels like uh, three years or something. It's a, a very dynamic, uh, high-paced company, and I enjoy um, being part of that hypergrowth right now. On the agenda today, um, we will first plunge into the idea of multi-generational workforce, having people of different generations working together in most of the companies, in most of the industries, We'll address briefly the current HR trends, total reward trends, and I invite anyone to jump in and give your experience, give your view on, on the topic. And then we're go, going to go into the Generation Z um, topic in more detail. We'll discuss the attributes 
the worldview, the values that this generation shares, what are they like at the workplace, and then address specifically the generational preferences of Zs in the compensation space, in the total reward space, and we discuss if there are any surprises that we discovered while talking through it, while exploring this issue, while researching this issue, just to finish off on a collective dialogue basis. So, multi-generational workforce. Um, somebody said once that demography is destiny. Demographics decide everything and our choice is actually pretty limited and illusionary in terms of the decisions that we make in life. And guess what? From the workforce perspective, demographics, the disruptions, changes affect the workplace and change in many folds the whole time. I presume it's not correct to say that we're having disruption right now. It seems to me that disruptions have been happening throughout human history and certainly after the Second World War, the timeline that we have here on this slide, that's been happening also regularly. So millennials, for instance, the term that has come so much to the fore about 10 years ago was heard so much less. I, I don't remember that being so prominent and now it's, it's, it's a term that we use on a daily basis. Millennials make up more than half of the workforce right now. Generation Z is right on their heels and baby boomers are now working well into their 70s and 80s. And so there is also that Generation X squeezed in, in between, which Douglas Copland uh, so um, lovely described in his eponymous book, is the generation I belong to. Um, so there is a longer life um, span, longer, longer life expectancy that affects the workforce landscape massively. And that is why I'm saying, even though we have new generation coming in right now, entering the workforce right now, it's still a situation where every single generation managed to contribute something to that landscape and managed to change it in a particular way. At the moment, we have a situation where very many companies, the majority of organizations in the majority of industries probably have at least four or five generations working together, working together in the same space. But <clears throat> what are these categories, are they completely set in stone? Who defined them? Who came up with these names? What is the time scale? How, how do we define who belongs to each generation? Is it the age, the date of birth purely? Is it something also to do with values, with the mindsets, with the mentality behind the generational workforce and the four generations that we have here? Before we move on, we thought it would be a, a great idea if we discuss that together. And for that, we are going to open up our first activity for the participants in mural with Marie's facilitation so that we, we can engage in a little bit of a dialogue on, on this topic. So yeah, um, what we're going to do now, I'm going to briefly describe those generations once again, like give, give some attributes from the research um, that's going on in the HR space. Um, I think we've all seen that the concept of generation, you can actually touch it. It's something that's, you can identify it, but it's not completely delineated in terms of the values, the identity ident uh, makers. And so with four or even five generations at the workplace, it can be challenging to understand and balance their diverse expectations from the HR point of view. And also when it comes to total rewards, to compensation benefits. The rewards include everything and employee values in a workplace, uh, in a relationship with the company, including compensation, benefits, work-life balance, performance management, uh, coaching, job satisfaction, motivation, engagement. And to address the needs of various generations in the workforce, we really need to define them as individuals and understand their typical expectations. So let's have a look, closer look. I used musical metaphors. I hope they speak to you. They speak to me greatly. I have two people that are my favorite on this slide, but I won't tell you which. So the baby boomer generation is well-defined as parents of many of us, uh, post-world generation. They were raised in the optimistic era when 
progress prevailed, um, society, humankind thought we would be able to move on away from the horrors of the 20th century. And um, they are motivated, the research shows, by the strong job title, by uh, monetary values, monetary money, recognition of hard work. So they are the generation that are prepared, were prepared to go the extra mile. They invented the 60-hour week, and they were prepared to put on the, those hours and have recognition from the company for the hard work they were putting in. They crave that recognition. They like status symbols, and maybe status symbols were important in that era as well. It becomes less kind of more diffuse at the moment with social media, but at the time, there were only some identifiers that could really speak status to, to the audience, to the outside world, and uh, this generation craved such identifiers. Generation X, oh yeah, by, by the way, the fun fact on the baby boomers, right now about 10,000 of them retire every day. So although this is a huge group in terms of their volume, it's also uh, slowly leaving the workplace, retiring, and giving way to younger generations in the workplace. Generation X, as I mentioned, so this is the smallest in numbers, individuals born between about 65 and 1980, that has been shaped by the fall of the, um, the, uh, the, the AIDS epidemic, the Vietnam, uh, the, um, um, the oil crisis. They are more skeptical generation that their parents, they have more need for stimulation, instant gratification. They believe in doing things their way, so they're pretty individual. They, they could be the ones that forgo the rules, and they are more independent, and um, they try to pursue their personal, professional advancement, sometimes slightly less to the interest overall, overall interest of the company compared to baby boomers. So for this generation, employees should extend opportunities for uh, personal development, give them feedback. Generation X is motivated to incentives tied to individual results. And they are, most of them are parents of children, parents of young children quite often, and children of parents who are now in declining health. So they, many of them value that work-life balance because they have pressures on both sides, so to say, in their life cycle, in the phase of their life. So they are interested in flexible schedules, balancing work and the outside, everything outside of, of work in their life. Um, the interesting fact about them is that 55% of startup founders are Generation X. So in proportion, this is the highest number. So that reflects that individual streak. Millennials quite quickly, um, among the different generations of in the workforce, millennials already comprise the largest group. Um, they are people that are born between 1981 and late 90s. They are shaped indeed by internet, so they are the first um, generation that really experienced the onset of internet. They're shaped by 9-11. Um, and their representation in terms, of the, in terms of the numbers is going to expand in the workplace. So this is a growing um, most uh, populous, most voluminous uh, workforce generation. Millennials are well-traveled. They are citizens of the world. They, many of them speak a second language. If you look at the earth overall, they desire... Um, constant feedback and they are interested in doing meaningful work. They like to work with friends, with bright, creative people. They definitely have an emphasis on creation in, in, the, in the workplace. Work-life balance becomes even more desirable for them. They um, are becoming parents as we speak, so they, they would probably be parents of younger children compared to even to Generation X. And 88% um, of millennials really value work-life balance and 77% expect a flexible schedule. So some things that have been nice to have in terms of the um, uh, HR practices are becoming something more of an expectation for some of, some of the generations. Millennials like sport awards, they um, like non-financial incentives like, for instance, group outings, team outings, 
uh, travel rewards, for instance, from the Compan Bank perspective. They have real concerns about their financial situation. They might have on the US side outstanding uh, college loans. They um, feel they need to do something to create a safety net in terms of their own retirement. And um, they, they are the first generation that wants to hear how they are doing in terms of the performance at work, but they also want to tell you how they feel you are doing as a company. So this is not something that's very typical, not typical at all, I would say, of baby boomers. And Generation X is also pretty weak on that. Millennials are the first generation who are open to forgo working for a company if they don't, they are not able to exchange in that dialogue. So they are not interested to just being judged and appraised. They also are prepared to give their own feedback to the employer. And I think that trait is going to increase it even more on the um, Generation X side. So millennials and Generation Z are kind of combining some of the some of the attributes. If they don't see enough uh, opportunities for um, leadership development, or if they feel that the organization is neglecting some some of their skills, they are going to address it. They are going to bring it up, and it might have repercussions on on the attrition or the um, engagement with that with that employer. Um, so fun fact about millennials is that they. Uh, will be comprising as much as 75% of the global workforce by 2025, as baby boomers are on the retiring streak. And what about Generation Z? What about Generation Z? Before we address that, I would like to ponder the overall HR trends that we currently see, the trends in the compound space as well, and actually, more generally speaking, societal trends actually, uh, which are manifested right now. It is probably fair to summarize at least four such um, manifestations currently. And they have um, slowly arrived at the stage with millennials and, and it's hard now to imagine, imagine workplace without these trends being at play. So I see this for diversity, transparency, learning and lifestyle as something that has appeared together with the millennial generation and, and is, being, is coming to the fore more and more, more pronounced in a more, more pronounced way. Diversity. So diversity, internal equity, equitability, inclusion are, uh, I think, now at the top of the minds for HR. Like I, I think and nobody could argue with that. It's a huge focus right now on diversity, being both an organizational principle of workplace, workplace culture, but also a strategic business advantage. It's an increasingly important topic. HR spends a lot of time, uh, and also leaders outside HR in a company devote their attention to this issue. Companies have become much more sensitized to biases at play, both implicit, subconscious, and conscious, and they take measures to tackle that. In many companies, there are trainings to uh, show us what kind of biases we can do, we can have uh, and we can apply without even realizing that. And forward-looking companies really uh, support inclusion as a, as a, as a principle of uh, workforce strategy. They, um, they now feel that it's not just a fashionable thing to do, but also that it contributes actually to the success of their business. Uh, many forward-leaning organizations also focusing on the idea of equity. So apart from diversity, inclusion, but also that internal equity as part of their overall HR strategy. And equity in, a, in the workplace manifests in a range of ways from um, uh, addressing pay inequity, exploring equity in terms of the talent, talent de uh, development investments and succession planning. Transparency, a second trend, which I think is uh, easy to touch and it's pretty identifiable. This is another value that comes to the fore these days. And when done well, I think it can uh, do wonders to create trust between employers and employees, help improve morale in the organization, lower job-related stress while increasing employee engagement. It can be also done poorly and create more problems that it was supposed to solve. Uh, but in general, 
a organizational transparency is a philosophy that is a philosophy of sharing information in an effort uh, for to benefit the organization and, and the people of the organization. Um, however, transparency doesn't mean just blurping everything out and exchanging everything and anything in the company because um, uh, it might create problems and drawing boundaries could be still essential regardless of having a whole overall principle of transparency applied uh, in, in a company. Transparency probably could be defined better as a uh, forthright communication in the organization. So whatever you decide to communicate, you do it in an honest way towards your employees in an honest and forthright manner. Learning. I've mentioned that these trends I see as big commas together with the millennial generation, but learning, I think, in my opinion, is like an omnipresent uh, trend in the workplace of value. And yet the world has shifted from the picture of like a linear picture of going to school, going to the university and then starting to work and pretty much moving away from uh, the learning mode. Of course, you learn at work, but it seems to me, and I might be wrong, might invite some discussion here. Nowadays, learning is learning mode is an everyday survival technique, I would even say, uh, to stay relevant in the workplace. So you cannot abandon that mode anymore to continue um, being a relevant employee and a valuable employee to the organization. So at the moment, continuous learning is a huge factor uh, of employee retention and motivation. Many people quit the company for reasons of poor management relationship, compensation, and lacking perspectives on learning. So learning, you cannot really disregard that as, a, as an important HR um, practice and policy within the company. Um, and right now, business moves with such speed that it becomes imperative to move together, to move with the times and giving employees tools and resources to constantly learn, uh, gives them ownership of their career, uh, ownership of the knowledge acquisition and really um, makes them being attracted to, to the company, um, increases their will to develop with the organization that they work for. And then lifestyle. So lifestyle, um, we mentioned work-life balance, this buzzword, buzz phrase. We mentioned that it's very important for the generations, at least from the millennial side, for Generation Z as well. It could be applicable to many Generation X people that they pursue lifestyle and they, their life is not just about work. And really millennials and Generation Z, especially, they um, separate work and life in a less clear-cut way. Um, Work-life balance is for them more like a, a moving target, a moving game, again, a fluid exchange of conditions. Um, this delineation is less precise, particularly for Generation Z. Um, they, the employees with their like daily life, daily choices, they argue against that fantasy that you could actually separate life and work in some kind of very precise manner, that they're like very different animals. Generations that challenges that notion. And comp and ban offerings in this space, in this area of lifestyle, um, we'll discuss that later in the presentation. They are becoming right now a very, a very important factor, a massive um, uh, possibility of employee engagement. So if employer is prepared to understand the lifestyle choices, the interests of the, this generation or any generation, uh, in terms of the um, benefits, choice, then the employer would have, um, would increase the engagement and the dialogue with the employees much easier. We are going right now to examine whether what we saw in the survey right now fits in well with what research tells, it, tells us about Generation Z. Um, just make it full screen. So maybe overlapping in the years of birth a little bit with millennials, this generation is truly global. They are well-traveled, 
um, they have the world at their fingertips connected via internet and this is exactly how they grew up. The penetration of internet has been already um, like it's, it's part of their DNA, it's, it's um, connected to an unprecedented degree even compared to millennials. Another uh, attribute of Generation Z is the multitasking. I actually had at the beginning, I think, um, short-term vision, or was it uh, something like short attention span, but I decided to reformulate it in a more positive way, to pose it as a multitasker generation, people that prefer to work, not just prefer to work on the multiple projects at the same time, but also feel comfortable with that. Uh, partially because the attention span is probably a bit shorter, but also just um, the way the way their education setup has developed them, the way they grew up with the availability of internet and multiple screens. Generation Z actually could work off five screens at the same time, and this also contributes to um, the ability to multitask very well. Generation Z is perceived by researchers as an entrepreneurial generation. Um, we saw uh, in the previous slides, I've mentioned that Generation X has the biggest number of people who are startup founders. The millennials are less so. Now this generation is coming up as somebody that desires um, independent work environment. Actually 75% of older teenagers, so the end of the teenage years, they want to found their own company, so they're very interested in uh, pursuing the entrepreneurial um, path in terms of their work, uh, but also the taboo of freelancing. In some countries, it has been very strong. It's slowly going away, even in, in some of the very conservative environments. And then the, uh, the fourth important attribute of this generation is being progressive. We've discussed that actually during our mural activity, we've seen that many people address that and identify that, and this is confirmed by everything you read about Generation Z. Um, Generation Z are progressivists and philanthropists. They want to do good to the world. 93% of them actually say that an organization's impact on society, climate, earth, the world, affects their decision to work there or not to work there. So it, it is a really, a value that's very close to their heart. And I don't think it's just words. I don't think this is just research claiming some things. I work right now in my company with uh, many people who belong to Generation Z, and I really see that they actually do think along those terms, something that let's say my generation or baby boomers are probably less, um, um, le spending less time or less actively thinking about those concepts and those aspects. Speaking about Generation Z at work, in the workplace, what are further characteristics of these people? What implications does this have for the workplace, the way they are, the way they grew up? What do they contribute to the workplace? How do they shape their environment? What do they bring to the companies? So as we mentioned, they are truly digital natives. Um, HR needs to take that into account when we build uh, any programs uh, because one of the values of Generation Z is that everything needs to be digitalized. And that is really um, perceived as something that we need to address on a daily basis when we build our performance management, when we address the metrics. These people would like to see everything in a quick way, on the screen, mobile, on the move. So I think that just affects the way HR works and HR interacts uh, and engages with these employees. Everything also needs to be personalized. It is a group that does not want to classify itself. And in terms of the generation, this generation as a talent pool, they are the most diverse workers, the most diverse of workers because um, they, we see now that their personal backgrounds are uh, very multifold. What, what we see right now coming into the work uh, it's people of different skin color. Uh, we see a huge emphasis on uh, their identity being different in the companies. So I think diverse uh, 
uh, workforce, it's really what Generation Z is. Very many of them are bilingual or multilingual due to the general higher mobility of the recent decades of their parents. They are well traveled and um, they are motivated by doing meaningful work. So it's actually something that comes up consistently in the research about generations that um, although they are interested in the job security, what they are even more concerned with is to contribute to the world in a meaningful way. So they don't want to necessarily spend the time working, sitting on the chair for eight hours, logging off, logging, logging on, logging off. They want that work to be uh, an improvement on the overall world conditions. Um, generations that want to focus on their personal development, they want opportunities for advancement. And this is the first generation that could consider skipping the uh, college years and going directly into the workforce if it can provide education in the field that they're interested in. And education is moving to the companies now. There is, uh, there is a general trend that um, many big companies create academic alliances and provide education opportunities to, to the younger um, people, to the new workers. And generations that wants coaching to be in the style of, of teaching, like they, they really, um, they really value uh, immediate coaching and they, um, they prefer that to be done in a direct way and in an honest way that what they expect as an important quality in the leader and their manager is a lot of feedback through multiple channels in a constant way and in an honest way. So solid leadership vision is something that they value very much and good communication skills become also very important uh, to them when they assess whether their leader is somebody that they, they can engage with um, and uh, work for ultimately. Um, Generation Z is going to be soon uh, accounting for about 35% of the workforce. So I think all those characteristics are something that uh, companies cannot um, ignore and need to take into account going forward. And here I would like to make a segue to the top of reward space properly, the topic, um, the main focus of today's discussion. We examined that the previous generations um, have their own preferences in terms of the rewards, in terms of what they expect on the comp and band pa package from their company. Um, and um, it seems to be pretty distinct mindsets for baby boomers uh, to pursue status, to pursue a strong title, it seems uh, a quite strong identifiable mindset of a Generation X to pursue individual rewards and to have some balance in their work and life. Uh, millennials, as I mentioned, are the ones that are interested in non-financial incentives, engaging with the employees, traveling, um, some spot awards, on the spot awards. And what about Generation Z? What are the components of a complement package that would be appealing particularly to this generation. Having researched this topic as I prepared for the talk, I've identified these five elements as the kind of um, the loudest, the biggest components of um, total rewards preferences of Generation Z. Choice and flexibility, professional and personal growth, lifestyle benefits, it's an app world and important perks. Choice and flexibility. Um, I mentioned one, that one of the primary values of Generation Z is to have everything customizable, personalizable, and flexible. And we still we, we think that Generation Z will have the ability to demand that personalization in how they move along their career journey. And for the organizations to attract and retain 
the best and brightest of this generation, it will require a mindset which allows to some degree, uh, some degree of choice between or in exchange for elements of a compensation package. So I see generations that employees are requesting a more generous holiday allowance instead of a base salary increase. They are sometimes able to request an increase on equity package instead of the base salary. And the interesting fact about them is that they are willing to speak up about these things. They are willing to actually express those preferences and um, um, express those preferences to the employer. Sometimes um, they, the trade-off is not something that the employer would be willing uh, to, to make, but at least these employees, the generations that employees are definitely the generation that feels empowered to uh, transfer uh, the desires on the area of selection of benefits or elements of the compensation uh, package to the company. Uh, while salary is the most important factor still in deciding on a job, Generation Z values uh, salary maybe a little bit uh, less than every other generation, and if given a choice of accepting a better paying but boring job versus something that would be more interesting but didn't pay as well as the previous as the first choice, Generation Z would fairly evenly split over, over this uh, choice. So that's, um, that's something that I've seen the research showing time and again, and this is something that uh, distinguishes generations that from the previous um, populations at the workplace. Um, generations that also uh, come to expect a high degree of personalization. I think we've spoken about this as well. Think Netflix, think Spotify, something that they uh, uh, like in their life something is also something that they would like to see at the workplace. So rewards pre uh, programs need to be similarly, similarly personalized. This means giving users a high level of choice in what they receive as far as the company can allow it. For instance, one way of addressing that could be flexible benefits. Uh, flexible benefits that allow employees more choice on the exact selection of the perks that they would receive in their package instead of a set predefined um, uh, benefit package. And ultimately, of course, employers still hold that decision how much choice they want to offer to the employees around the types of the benefits, what employees can access, but the name, the word flexible comes from employees choosing from a selection of different benefits very often uh, nowadays. And this is really the impact of Generation Z. Professional and personal growth. Um, while this value I think is universal, everyone is interested in um, moving up in their career, uh, having a um, progressive, a development career path, having a clear understanding of what it takes to make a move from one job level to another job level, it seems to be very high on the radar for Generation Z. What I found interesting when I researched this topic is that Generation Z is energized by failure. So uh, in opposition to maybe some earlier generations, they are not afraid um, as much to make a mistake and to be confronted with with that mistake. And in fact, they perceive failure or a mistake as something that would help them to learn and to grow. They are eager to take on that feedback. They are less intimidated by such, uh, by a negative feedback or by feedback that points out an error on their side. And this desire to learn and grow is very strong. They seek opportunities to upskill their, um, in every area, their skills, because also companies are now attracting employees on skills and provide more opportunities for um, career path development, which is less conventional and depends on the skill development rather than a hierarchical progression. Uh, something that we discovered when, uh, when we did our survey, the clear preference of this generation is uh, not a straightforward career path. 
the Java architecture in the company needs to allow for di uh, diagonal moves, horizontal moves, lateral moves, and not necessarily only one vertical line the way it used to be um, 50, 30 years ago, not necessarily having to switch from the individual contributor to manager career path. Um, companies need to give the signal to the employees right now that if you stay on an individual career path, it's still possible to have a career progression, it's still possible to have a salary increase, and the companies now explore new novel ways of looking at job architecture that allow for diagonal moves where employees would be able to learn skills in an adjacent area of their expertise and then may make a move back or make a move in a diamond shape rather than strictly even lateral or a vertical progression. Lifestyle benefits. Uh, we've discussed lifestyle as one of the trends in HR and in total rewards. And this really is um, the latest trend in employee benefits packages. Employee benefits continue to evolve uh, as workers' lives become more complex and lifestyle benefits are structured to reduce some of that complexity, complexity some of that stress. And to help uh, employees um, uh, with their lifestyle choices, companies offer voluntary benefits that do not cover that are not do not cover something like traditional something that is a long-standing um, uh, benefit package like a retirement plan or uh, company-sponsored health uh, insurance. Lifestyle benefits could cover a variety of things, and employees of this generation are willing to speak up about their interests. It could be a um, pet policy, having a pet, pet being brought to work. It could be pet medical care. It could, of course, be fitness, uh, poly, uh, fitness benefits. They are very, very popular. There could be benefits around the identity theft. It could be a tax helpline. It could be a roadside assistance. Many of, many of these benefits are connected to, the, uh, to, to necessity to help employees to um, think about their finances, so to, to be able to plan financially, something that millennials and generations that maybe has not grown up uh, to be very fluent in. And these uh, types of perks are really favored by this generation. Um, we are right now going through the COVID crisis. 30% of uh, generations that in the US reduced income from their job as the result of that crisis. And learning how to manage the budget, manage the budget uh, is a troubling aspect for many. And having someone in the company on site uh, to walk employees through budgeting, investing, adequately saving their income is a huge perk uh, to, that these generations are looking for. Also, lifestyle spending accounts. They allow employees, employers to make taxable uh, contribution on employees' behalf and employees can spend these on some uh, products and services that the company enabled for them. So definitely we see an increase of uh, such types of benefits in the workplace, and I think that's also an impact generated both by uh, Zers, but also um, through um, uh, general societal crises that we're experiencing right now. It's a NEP world. Um, this is actually a combination of how to speak to these employees, how to engage these employees, and uh, the rewards topic. Uh, so Generation Z views their online presence as part of their identity. We've mentioned that also many times before today already. And they will require a more personalized interaction with the workplace through the web. And companies could consider that online recognition tools would be very interesting for these employees, online wellness programs that people can participate in, um, easy access to performance management metrics and tracking. Particularly the last point, I see that uh, the generations that employees are not somebody, are not those people that would negate the need for a performance management, but they are interested in having that done in a more convenient, 
mobile friendly um, way that increases their emotional click with the company. Um, any ways of engaging with this generation online increases and stokes uh, the generations that engagement with the employer. I've mentioned that um, important perks are definitely a, a, a big area of total rewards preferences from the perspective of Generation Z. And I've decided to split this topic, the, the topic of benefits and perks, into two uh, different subsets. The first one I identified as beanbag perks. And actually, they're more related to the uh, company and the workplace as a company as a workplace, company as a cultural glue, company as a cool environment. Um, now with the extended and expanded opportunities to work remotely, Generation Z is increasingly thinking of the workplace as a place to socialize with their teammates, a place where brainstorming can take place, whereas more mundane work can be performed for instance, at home, and is already, this is already the case. And employers would win their hearts, the hearts of Generation Z, by creating such good space at the workplace, and maybe by feeding it with healthy food and snacks on site, a safe place to lock up your bicycle or scooter, uh, providing a commuting uh, assistance, public transportation assistance. Mobility perks come very strongly in the generations that preferences research, cheap rental of electronic scooters and bikes is very high on the agenda. Fitness related uh, benefits within the company on site, anything to do with a beanbag, relaxed environment, relaxed uh, casual uh, dress code. This is what I mean by beanbag perks. And I don't think this is uh, exclusive to Generation Z. I think a lot of it is prompted by the remote work policies that many companies are introducing right now. They're rethinking the whole concept of office space, what office space is going to be used for primarily going forward. But definitely Generation Z values of independence, relaxed approach uh, to um, teammates, I think is also very, uh, is very reflected in the current trend and it's like a amalgam of the, of the trend that comes from the remote work necessity uh, and the values of the Generation Z per se. However, something that came surprisingly through the survey and through the discussion, I think, in Neural, uh, is that we, when you ask that question, when you just pose that question, we do not believe that Generation Z would be interested in a traditional uh, offerings on the compensation side, something that probably would not be so much on their radar. Um, this is what um, our survey showed. This is what we think in a, maybe a standardized cliched approach. This is what we think Generation Z uh, would not be particularly interested in. And however, looking across the looking across the Generation Z research that emerged over the last years, the most interesting theme is how much this, de this generation defies the uh, stereotypes about, about them as younger workers, not interested in some uh, more classic complement offerings. Um, generations that actually have grown up in the shadow of the financial crisis, in a decade of job insecurity uh, in, uh, from their parents or in their family homes, they've experienced that. And they actually do place high importance on salary and more traditional benefits from the perspective of the total rewards. Um, benefits which are not beanbag, which are not a free snack, are still pretty high on the radar for Generation Z. So retirement, saving plans, these are not just for all the generation. Why could that be the case? We know that with the advance of science, um, the extended lifespan of both millennial and generations at parents, um, I think that, that could be a contributing factor. Um, some people are um, 
um, adding extra expenses to their budget in terms of the um, realization that they need to take care of their parents going forward, not just their children. And there's actually some shocking findings in some studies from the millennials and the Generation Z perspective. They expect that they will need to financially help their parents during their retirement years. Uh, and also they will be building their own families. So the pressure on these generations, both millennials and Zs, are twofold, and they are trying to address that, even, even if they're not making some active steps towards actual savings. It's, it's something that bothers them. It's something that's on their mind, uh, that they need to create a significant pool of money for their own retirement to take care of the younger children and to take care of their parents. Um, that adds up pretty quickly. In addition, uh, many of uh, Generation Z respondents in surveys are not confident in the social security in the respective country legislation or jurisdiction where they live would be able to provide them with meaningful income to address those pressures that I just described. And this makes um, company-sponsored pension plans even more attractive and more critical in their eyes. Um, other classic benefits like disability insurance is also perceived as a good addition. I've done a survey in my own company, and I've seen that this comes up as a, as a highly valued shiny prize as well. So it's not just something for the older generations. It's not something for uh, people who, who can see on their horizon that um, health issues will be increasing with years. Generations that is very well aware that uh, this is something that can all, always happen, and they are interested in companies providing those benefits as well. In general, 83% of Generation Z, according to some studies, uh, say that saving for the future is very important, and it could be counter to the cliches, as we've seen from the survey, but this generation definitely thinks in the long term. Um, sport awards, celebrations of small landmarks are also a very interesting um, aspect that Generation Z is attracted to. Uh, they, have the fee they have the need of um, gratification as well. They, they want to be recognized. They, they don't want to be um, neglected for even for smaller achievements, especially as the performance management becomes more um, feedback oriented, um, shout outs, um, employee all hands with names being uh, declared of high performers. This is something that this generation is not ashamed of participating in, and they, they value that very well. Internal fairness. This is a topic from the total rewards perspective that's very close, near to employees' hearts of the Zers. Um, we know that we've just discussed the diversity, inclusion, equity at workplace. This is exactly the value that this generation really uh, shares. Um, equal, equal pay. Um, gender pay gap is something that employees in my company often address and bring up as something that the employer uh, needs to assess and if uh, challenges identified really tackle those challenges. This has been the rewards beyond the beanbag topic from the perspective of uh, Generation Z. What I also wanted to say, and I didn't include it on here, um, from my own survey in my own company, um, I, I, I feel that this generation is really prepared to challenge the current status quo in terms of the comp compensation package. They want the employers to be prepared to take a fresh look. It's not like they exercise pressure necessarily on the employer, but they want the employer to think of the compensation package in a creative way. This generation requires a clear guidance on the work-life balance. It could be the generation, it could be the people that would be, for the first time in your career in HR, would lobby for free leave days for social project and volunteering, for instance. And this is something that HR has not maybe seen so much, and um, it just speaks to that need for being more creative in terms of the uh, comp and ban uh, package setup.
to make it attractive for, for the Zers. I think we are almost at the end. Just, uh, I think that's my probably one, my last slide on the, on the content before we open up for questions and the quick discussion. Um, what I found when I prepared for this uh, talk today uh, is that the cliche thinking about Generation Z sometimes is not particularly helpful. I also explored that topic looking at my own environment right now. We've said in the survey before, and that would be something that, uh, that would be also my kind of native knee-jerk reaction if somebody asked me, Generation Z is probably not very interested in hierarchy. For Generation Z, clear delineation, job titles, career, uh, clear career progression is probably not something that um, is very important or very valuable. And however, when I see Generation Z participants in a highly competitive hierarchical environment, I see that they do, uh, they do begin to value hierarchy also highly and they become hierarchical themselves. I'm not sure whether that comes from, maybe it's the Instagrammable world, the worldview that life on display that, they, that leads to that fear of missing out on the new title, on the, in, like on the promotion. There is, there is definitely an appetite in some members of this generation for progression and for some boasting and for a lofty job title very early in life. So although, it feels unnatural, I would say it's not necessarily completely unimportant to this generation at large. Another paradox that I think is worth mentioning regarding Zs is that although they're very digital, right? So digitalized world, this is the way they grew up, this is the way uh, they've been interacting with the world almost all their life, regardless of that fact, they crave more and not less human interaction at work. They live on their smartphone, they get most recent information on their smartphone, but they're influenced by real people as well. So they're, they're influenced by influencers with whom they can interact directly, they can send a message to Barack Obama, they can um, speak to any of their um, stars, the people that they perceive highly through some other social channels. And that interaction is actually a very important to them, that physical aspect of, of uh, uh, living in a society. And they're more likely to share their um, compound preferences, total reward preferences uh, in a human interaction. They are not afraid of um, sharing that information. They're not afraid of, they're they not prepared to keep secret and they would like employers to also be honest and uh, open in the information sharing. And then finally, the third paradox that I've discovered is the financial security paradox. Members of Generation Z observed their parents and the communities suffer through some financial setbacks, and um, um, they've seen their parents face wealth uncertainty, uncertainties for a period, some periods of time. And this might be why Zers prioritize security benefits and economic stability. This is a pragmatic generation. It's, they, do take, uh, they do care about making a difference, but they're also motivated by ensuring that they have a secure life outside of work. And work provides for that, for that secure life. So instead of table football and beer fridges in, in the workplace, many studies show that these employees want meaningful support for, for their financial well-being. This is something that we really cannot ignore as, as employers and as HR. Okay, and this is, I think, my last slide. Yes, and, it is. I believe so. Yeah, and Marie, I've, I've uh, decided on the quote for the end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I learned when discussing this project with Marie, and thank you, Marie, for being a great sounding board when we developed this, um, um, this session today. What we discussed with Marie was 
generations is one thing, but your own life cycle is another. And there comes a phase where differences probably matter less and less, uh, differences between generations. I think um, that life phases, they uh, eventually prevail and unify us maybe in mm -hmm. some ways. They make a connection from baby boomers to generation X, from generation uh, uh, X to Y to Z. Gina Pell is an American award-winning creative director and a tech entrepreneur who in 2016 coined the term perennials as an ever-blooming, relevant people of all ages who live in the present time, know what happen what's happening in the world, stay current with technology and have friends of all ages. Perennials get involved, stay curious, mentor others and are passionate compassionate, creative, confident, collaborative, global-minded risk-takers uh, who know, who comprise an inclusive, enduring mindset and not a diverse demographic. I have another quote there from Gina Pell about perennials. So uh, she says that being a millennial doesn't mean, being a millennial doesn't mean you have a uh, hipster beard. Being a millennial doesn't mean that you live in your parents' basement. Uh, being a younger worker doesn't mean that you drink craft beer and blend your own coffee. Midlife crisis doesn't have to be, doesn't have to happen. We don't have to be a number. We don't have to be placed into boxes. We are all relevant. We are ever blooming. We are perennials. So she uh, came up with that, um, with that interesting term and this is not about the age, this is a mindset. Millennials can, can be perennials, octogenarians can be perennials, even children can be perennials. We are talking about a mindset, not a flat one-dimensional timeline that we've discussed at the beginning of this presentation that runs from birth, but rather uh, uh, something that can, instead of dividing us, bring us together. And maybe when I was reading about this, I thought maybe it's just a fluffy euphemism to make people who are like about 50 years old to feel better about themselves. But I think um, it's probably fair to say that as people live and work longer, they can bring color and vibrancy to any office, all of them, the whole audience. And employers which create opportunities uh, for people of all ages, um, they will benefit from this, from this color. From, from this larger audience at work. And it's important to honor all generations so that a millennial com coming up with a new idea is given as much validity as a, as a baby boomer or someone, someone older doing that. So companies need a complete picture of various colleagues' needs and aspirations. I think we've also pointed that out. And uh, they really need to recognize a tremendous value that the diverse workforce in terms of the age uh, brings uh, to the table in terms of the expertise, in terms of the work style, leadership style, and just even pure life experience. And so in some ways, maybe generation, and this is something that I would like us to discuss briefly at the end, maybe generation is just becoming a less relevant um, way to understand workforce, to think about the workforce. Um, the starting point maybe should be that the careers have become more dynamic, more complex, they are losing, losing that historical correlation between age and career progression. And also the technology is very rapid that develops with speed of light. And that means that workers need to be, need to be reinventing themselves, no matter whether they are 30, 20, 50 years old, they need to reinvent themselves multiple times throughout their working lives. Their working lives are gonna be very long. And at the same time, I think business culture is also shifting to make it more acceptable that these changes happen and, some, some, and maybe even desirable that these changes happen. Um, sometimes I can see that companies are prepared to promote younger individuals into leadership roles. And I wonder whether it's possible to see a workplace where there will be a 65 year old intern uh, working next side by side next to a 25-year-old manager. 
and I will stop here. And I would be interested to hear your point of view, whether perennials make sense as a concept. What you think about is, does this uh, help us understand people's workplace challenges and needs? What do you think about this concept? You have now reached the end of March 2021 webinar recording proposed by Munich Afterwork. We have actually removed the Q&A session of this presentation to protect the personal data of all of our participants. Thank you for your interest in this format and for having watched the replay 